Well, good evening, Gardendale First Baptist Church family, and I know we have some friends that are joining with us tonight. We're glad you're with us. Whether you're watching this live or you may be watching this at another time, we welcome you. We're so excited you're here. This is what we call 714 Prayer and Conversation. It's about a 30-minute uh, program that we'll have for you tonight, and we're just blessed that you're with us. We base that on 2 Chronicles 7.14. And you'll probably know that scripture well. It's the great revival verse in the Bible. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek the face of God and turn from our wicked ways, then, I love this, God will hear from heaven. And boy, if we ever needed a word from heaven, it is certainly now. He will forgive our sin. To God be the glory. And I love this last little phrase that sometimes we overlook. He will heal our land. And so that's really what this is all about. And we're glad that you've joined us. God bless you. We have been um, you know, live streaming Wednesday evening at 714 and then Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And that's kind of the, the, um, the rhythm that we're in, the season that we're in right now. We're paying attention to uh, the uh, guidelines that have been uh, given to us from the governor and, of course, from, uh, from our president and from our local health authorities, so we're paying attention to that as things change, and we'll update you, but that's the season that we're in right now, and we're so thankful that we can have that, and we're grateful for our media ministry that make this possible, that you can kind of feel connected. The idea of tonight is it kind of gives you a little bit of a, uh, maybe some uh, spiritual strength, and just a, a shot in the arm in some ways from Sunday to Sunday, so we hope that the next few minutes will be inspiring, encouraging to you, be a blessing to you. Uh, if you're watching, again, I would just say to you, drop a note on that Facebook, give us a little comment, tell us you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. People love to know that, and oftentimes they'll comment, hey, I'm from here, I'm from here, and that kind of thing. There might be a connection. Also, if you have a prayer request, I would ask you to place that on there. Put your prayer request there. Our staff, we're monitoring that even in real time, and we'll be praying for you. And then other folks that are watching the program can be praying for you too, and there's power in that. So let us know if you have a prayer need, and again, we're thankful that you are worshiping with us. If you have an essential need, I've often said if you're elderly, widowed, homebound, and you don't have something, an essential need that you uh, do not have, then contact us. We will make sure that you get that, okay? God bless you. Hey, it's a joy to have you with us. We're honored. Each week we've tried to have a different guest with us. And tonight we're honored and blessed to have Pastor Emmanuel Foster with us, a dear brother, a dear friend, and has become a good friend to me over the past couple of years. He always sends me an encouraging note or text ever so often. And I try to do the same thing with him, and we're honored to have him with us. Welcome, Brother Emmanuel. You. Thank you for being with us. God bless you, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Foster. Has his Doctor from Beeson University, yes, Beeson, Divinity. Uh, Beeson Divinity, right? And uh, Dr. Robert Smith. And so many of you Gardendale First Baptist folks, you'll know him. He has preached at our church several times. So he was kind of a, a mentor to him. And he studied under him for his doctorate ministry degree there. So welcome. We're glad you're with us tonight. Yes, God bless you. He pastors in the area. In fact, he wears a couple of hats. But before we get into that, I want to ask him to introduce himself to us. You may or may not know him if you don't know him. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you grew up here, went to school here, yeah. some of those kinds of things. Just give us a little bio about Emmanuel Foster. Well, first of all, Pastor Ham, I want to thank you for this invitation. Uh, you're dearly a beloved brother in the Lord. Thank you. And I thank you for extending a friendship some, several years ago. I think I was attending a men's conference. Yeah. And I just thank God for you for being a, a great brother in the Lord, a great encourager to me. Uh, yes. Uh, of course, my name is Emmanuel Fausto. I was reared and raised in the uh, Bessemer area, uh, raised in a single-parent home. Um, have two two brothers, two siblings. Um, was passionate about sports. Uh, consider myself a pretty good baseball player. Uh, always was involved in sports. Um, then in my high school year, I um, well, I always had a passion about football. So. Yeah. I attended Jessalyn Hill High School, grew up in the Belsma City school system, and um, you know, I, then I you know, started getting well with football and, and working with it, um, and then I be felt like I became a pretty good football player. Um, there I served and played uh, cornerback there, and then I uh, went on over to uh, Jacksonville State where I was on a uh, football scholarship. Okay. And then I went yeah. ahead on and I uh, was in ministry, and I got a call from Desire Hill Missionary Baptist Church to 
come and serve as pastor of their great church in yeah. Bessemer, Alabama. Right. Right, we've got a picture there of it. That's awesome. So football, all right. So you started out in baseball and then uh, ended up playing football too and then played college there. So yeah, you know, uh, I love, my dad was a PE teacher for 30 years and so I grew up, you know, loving sports. I tell folks, and I don't say this, this is not humble, this is true. Anybody who knows me knows this as well, that I love two, th you know, I love the Lord, of course, my family, you understand that. But I'm just saying there are two things that I really kind of, think I know a little bit about and uh, that's church I've been in church all my life I'm still learning always learning and, and sports uh, you know just love sports I tell folks I grew up with a baseball in one hand a basketball in another I said I didn't play football you can get killed playing football so anyway <laughs> but I love sports too and uh, my dad uh, just being around sports all my life so well, that is so cool and then you ended up surrendering the call right. and following that call to the church and in Bessemer, yeah. wonderful, that's great. To, to, now, how long have you pastored there? Okay, um, the Lord has graciously um, allowed me the privilege to pastor there over 19 years. Isn't that amazing? Right. I did not realize years, that. 19 years, 19 years. And it's so ironic yeah. how uh, the opportunity was given to me. Um, and I'm very grateful for the, all of the members at um, Zion Hill. Many of them are watching. I want to say hello to you yeah. all. Yeah, absolutely. And I love you all, and I pray all is well with you all. Um, but, um, you know, I was serving as an assistant uh, minister at my home church, Beulah Second Avenue. Uh, of course, it's in Bessemer as well. And uh, each year my pastor takes a, um, a sabbatical, or he takes a month off, and usually the month of uh, December. And I uh, kind of hear a little bit that, you know, Zion Hill was interested in me, and um, however, I wasn't ordained. So, you know, in order to be ordained to serve the uh, Lord's Supper, et cetera. But just the timing was all, everything was just fit and just heading in that direction. And so um, one of the other associates, he had um, was called to a church. So I was the only one left. And so I had, um, my pastor had to do something about it. And so he went ahead on and ordained me. And it just one thing led to yeah. another and um, sort of had a Damascus Road experience as well. Um, when I was um, 10 or 11, I uh, had a serious car accident there on 9th Avenue in Bessemer. And um, mm. you know, I still have a scar on my head now. I had a core over 40 stitches. Mm. Oh but my I felt like that was my Damascus mm. Road yeah. experience where I felt the hand of the Lord. And um, I just felt like God was calling me some, to do some greater work. Yeah. And um, once I was healed from that, that accident, you know, I just started yeah. to pursue the, the call. But I always knew I had that urge. I yeah. always knew I had that pull. I was always attracted to preaching. Yeah. Well, you can see God's hands on you, brother. And, and you know, it's neat how uh, amazing how God takes those kinds of events in our life and turns them and use them. In fact, I always say what the enemy meant for harm, what the enemy meant for harm, God many times will take it and use it for our good and for his glory. And so that is so so amazing how you can look back on that and see God's hand right. on you all the all the time, even through that accident, how he used that to kind of grab your attention, that kind of thing. Well, my pastor here, he he also sorry, he sorry, he has a couple of different hats that he wears, and that's what makes this a little bit unusual tonight. Not only is he a pastor of a wonderful, thriving church there in Bessemer, but he also tell us what else you do a little bit. Well, yes, I'm a, I work in the educational field. I, I am a school counselor, ninth and 10th grade school counselor at Pennsylvania Valley High School. So kudos to all uh, <laughs> Indians there. We um, yeah. were football champions two years straight for the, uh, not this current past year, but yeah. two years prior. Right, not that anybody's bragging or anything. Right, <laughs> just, just <laughs> right. and yeah. um, so I've been there. This is my first year, so the Lord will, the upcoming school year will be my second year there. However, I've been a school counselor um, going on four years, probably five years, yeah. but I've been in education overall for over 16 or perhaps 17 years. I started out very, very young. Not that I'm old now, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. about 21, 22 years old. Wow. I was started my first time of um, teaching there in the Fairfield City School System. And then I uh, went to UAB, got my school counselor degree. And um, you know, each time I pursued the Lord, opened a door. Yeah. So I'm just thankful That's for sweet. his grace. That's great. That he's extended towards me. Yeah. And you know, uh, 
I, I can't, I can't, you know, I'm just thinking, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, a school counselor of ninth and 10th graders, wow, that is, a, that takes a lot of nerve, <laughs> that's certainly, certainly it's a God's calling on you, no doubt about it, you certainly could do other things, but it, I, I appreciate the fact that your pastor's heart, not only with your flock, but here you are, you know, in a, in a school system and, and dealing with kids from all different kinds of walks of life and find themselves in different situations in life and so you know being able to offer a solid word encouragement advice counsel to them man it's no doubt God has you there for such a time as this but I can't imagine uh, some of the things that you may deal with and face and try to help and uh, and I know you know even this uh, speak a little bit pastor if you would to the virus this uh, you know that uh, this pandemic. You know you're you're kind of uh, in some ways it's kind of highly unusual that you're having to deal with this as a pastor, and how do you minister to your flock? And then also, you know how it's impacted the school. And you know just uh, you were there at school one day, and you were and then gone the next, right. thinking, hey, we're probably going to come back, but you you haven't and didn't. And so I know uh, you know it's amazing how how that has impacted kids and they tell us you know depression suicide uh, domestic abuse I was just listening on the radio on the way over here they were talking about how divorce rates are even they're even beginning to trace some of that back now to even this quarantine time where folks feel like the walls are kind of closing in on them but if you would and, and that's kind of a broad question but speak to us just a moment about the impact of the virus maybe on you as a pastor and as a school counselor and how you're kind of navigating that? You know, that's a great question. Um, so we did, uh, actually we were hearing about other school systems, um, you know, were beginning to shut down because of the spread of the coronavirus. And our, our principal was kind of preparing us, he, well he was preparing us and, you know, we was getting ready to start, you know, uh, adjusting and getting um, e-learning online classes. But before we were able to really get fully prepared, you know, we were hit. And on uh, the next, we were able to release the kids that day and uh, we got an email later that same day stating that, you know, we were not able to uh, return back to school. And so it's pretty much just been through emails, um, WebEx, uh, we have a faculty meeting uh, every Friday. Um, of course, our director, Mr. Mohan, does a great job. He uh, meets with us through WebEx. So basically, all of the communication is, is done through uh, virtual mm -hmm. and online. And, but uh, one thing, you know, I, I have noticed as a school counselor that with our current generation is that many of our kids are, are struggling with mental illness mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. coping skills and social skills, et cetera. And uh, in regards to the coronavirus, you know, it has shaken our country, uh, shaken pretty much every aspect of our state uh, health-wise educational wise, uh, socially, uh, et cetera. But I just believe the uh, coronavirus is a detest to the good that God uh, created in the world. Uh, you know, I believe all things were created perfect uh, and right in the beginning, and anything that counters that or against that is considered evil or sin. Mm. And so, um, you know, I think it's a wake up call, this pandemic yeah. crisis, Absolutely. where, and I'm glad what you're doing in regards to this um, passage of scripture, my people call by my name. Yes. Well, I'm gonna themselves and seek my faith, then I will hear f that they will hear from heaven. Mm -hmm. It's a great piece of us getting back to mm -hmm. what God's original plan yeah. uh, is for our life. That is to bless us uh, so we can live a rich spiritual life that we can not only be blessed, but we can be a blessing to mm -hmm. those who stand in need of um, salvation. Yeah, it's a good word. And, you know, it's funny you would uh, allude to that uh, this coming Sunday. I was just doing a little bit of, of uh, finishing up prep work for this coming Sunday morning. And one of the, one of the questions, I'm not going to give it all to you. You're going to have to stream with us Sunday morning. But one of the questions I ask is, uh, where is God when these kinds of tragedies happen? Where is God in this virus? Mm -hmm. And uh, and so anyway, I'm going to give you know three different answers uh, to that, and, and one of them I'll, I'll clue you into one of them, not not three, just one. But one of them is that tragedies happen, you know, in this on this earth because this earth has been poisoned, impaired by sin, yes, sir. and it's really the result of sin. And uh, and so God is not ruling and reigning as He will one day when He banishes the enemy and eliminates sin. But until we get to heaven, uh, we're going to face tragedies because this world 
is decaying, falling apart because of sin. So, and you, you alluded to that. Let me, let me turn the corner just for a moment, if I may, Pastor. Thank you. Great word to us, by the way. How, uh, how could we pray effectively um, for you uh, as a pastor, for you as a school employee? And we have many folks that may find themselves in, in similar situations. Uh, how we might pray for the for that you know you're close to the next generation um, you're with them on a daily basis in school and you know kind of the what they're facing the you know the challenges the homes they might come from the situations they might come from so just take a moment and tell us what are you know how how could we pray uh, for you as a pastor for your congregation. Uh, how could we pray for you as a, as a school employee, as a counselor? How could we pray for the next generation? You know, just two or three or four things that might jump out at you that might kind of guide a prayer time. Yeah, well, first of all, I think um, wisdom is, um, to me, is very, very um, valuable. You know, um, mm -hmm. Solomon speaks yeah. of it, that it is the principal thing. And wisdom just simply the ability to see through... Um, the lens of God with the word yeah. of God. Good. David says, thy word have thy hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So I ask that you and the church and those who are watching uh, this evening will pray for the wisdom and also the unity because at some point we are gonna come back. We are yeah. gonna reopen. We are gonna get that release to come back in these sanctuaries and these buildings that we will be more unified mm, good. and that uh, we will hear, hear the voice of the Lord. Yeah through this time of a pandemic crisis. So unity, uh, especially with our unity within our country, you know, yeah. there's a lot of blaming, there are a lot of accusing, you know, we got a lot of political parties going mm -hmm. against one another and um, yeah. perhaps may be in the body of Christ. Mm. But uh, I just pray for unity Amen, because we're still that. one faith with one Lord, yes. with one people in the eyes of the Lord yeah. Almighty. I tell you, there's one race, the human race. Right. And so Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. Right. And uh, you're my brother, and I, I love you, man, and thank you for sharing. I want, I, we want to pray for you and to pray for those requests that you have just mentioned, and uh, very insightful. And uh, I know that you probably have some prayer needs in your life tonight. Man, we'd love to pray for you. Please, if, you're, if you happen to be on Facebook with us live, jot down your prayer request. Uh, we'll follow up. We'll be praying. Our staff works through those. We view every, read every comment. And so uh, we uh, look forward to praying for you and to praying for uh, my brother and his ministry here and some of what he has shared with us tonight. Very, very insightful. Um, I had another word, that I, something I was going to ask about, and um, uh, I'm now in my mid-50s, so it's, uh, it's not coming to me right now, but maybe it'll hit me in just a minute. So, uh, but I really, I know what it was, yeah. You, uh, he, uh, my, have you just started, are you, are you live streaming, you're recording your message and send that out to your people, right, right? right? You just started that, right? Yes, sir. And you know, one of the things, I was, I was in a Zoom meeting today with a lot of pastors from across the state here, and it's really interesting because many of them have never uh, used a camera, they've never live streamed, you know, never, never recorded, you know, anything like that, and, and they were talking about how it's kind of pushed them outside their comfort zone, and before we began with 714 tonight, Pastor Brother Emmanuel, we were talking about that and how he's uh, learning, you know, to preach with a camera, and he's recorded that and sent it to his people, and he sent me uh, uh, his message too that I listened to, and man, it just I really enjoyed it. it did a great job, and uh, I, I really enjoyed his message, and uh, and the Lord just kind of laid him on my heart. I thought he'd be great for us to kind of share and pick his brain because he grew up here. He's from Birmingham. He's a Bessemer boy. He. Uh, He's a pastor, uh, he's a school counselor, so he's involved in the school system, so he, uh, he uh, has worn a lot, of, wears a lot of different hats, and uh, God is using him in a, in a neat way. And I appreciate his passion for, for unity. Uh, several years ago at our men's steak night, yeah. um, I had the opportunity, uh, I think Brother Mark Harrison had made a connection with you, and said, hey, I want you to meet a friend of mine tonight. And I said, well, that's great, man. Have him sit up here with us. And so uh, he, we were able to kind of sit together and just develop a friendship there. And I just sense that uh, the Spirit of God in you, man, is, connects with the Spirit of God in me, and that's what the body's all about. So here's what I want us to do. Uh, I want us to pray for my brother and his ministry there. 
at uh, is it New Zion? Zion Hill. Zion Hill. Okay, I knew I knew I knew there was a Zion to it. So right. I'm sorry. I, I was talking with somebody else. They uh, I, there was there was Zion Hill. Yeah, absolutely. And for his ministry uh, at the school there too. Then I want to read a scripture to us. And then tonight uh, we're going to have a, a time of worship because we want you to be encouraged tonight. And maybe it's been a long day for you. Maybe things have gone really well and it's been a great day. But maybe for some of you it's uh, it's been a long day. Maybe you're weary and tired. Maybe you're emotionally drained. Maybe you're spiritually dry tonight. You just need some encouragement. And so we're blessed to have Elena Cronin with us tonight. Elena is the daughter of Phil and Gina Cronin. Gina sings a lot with our worship ministry, and, and Elena does too. And uh, she's part of our sub-25, our college ministry. In fact, uh, her, hus- her, her dad, Phil, is on staff here. Phil Cronin on staff with our church, does a lot with outreach and and uh, new members ministry and so Elena's has really grown up here been here the last you know 14 15 years our student ministry now in our college ministry so we're excited to have her come and sing for us in just a moment and so I'm going to read a scripture that will kind of springboard into her song Uh, but before we do that I want us to pray and so right wherever you may be if you're able to maybe you're at work in a cubicle maybe you're at home somewhere you can find a quiet spot if you got kids and grandkids running around, go to the bathroom and lock the door. You know, anyway, whatever you need to do, find you, clear you off a spot for a moment. And let's just go to our Lord tonight and let's, uh, let's pray for our country and pray for our brother and pray for the request that he has mentioned. So if you're physically able and you're comfortable, man, just stretch your hand out toward the camera, toward the, the computer, toward your tablet, whatever it may be. And I'm going to stretch my hand out toward my brother. And then we're going to pray right here. Lord, in the strong name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your peace. And Lord, I just lift the needs that my brothers mentioned, God. We need wisdom. Boy, we sure do. You said if anybody lack wisdom, ask for it. And so God, as a people, we ask for spiritual discernment, knowledge, and wisdom that comes from heaven. Lord, to navigate these uncharted waters, these unprecedented times, we need wisdom. Lord, uh, parents for their children, employees for their workers, uh, staff and church folk for their churches. Lord, just across our nation, our, our leaders need, our government leaders, we need, such, we need wisdom from on high. So God, would you give us wisdom that only you can give? Speak to our spirits, God. Guide us. The Bible said we can make plans, but it's you, Lord that will make them accomplished. And so, God, I pray for that in the strong name of Jesus. And I pray for unity tonight, man. I thank you, Lord, for that passion, God, that we're on one team serving the same God, same Lord, same Savior, one team for one cause. And so, God, I pray that somehow, some way, you would use what the enemy seems to be using to splinter our nation. And, God, would you supernaturally and would you divinely, would you sovereignly, God, use that to bring our nation to, first of all, to our knees, to realize without you we're nothing. And, God, we come to you in brokenness and repentance tonight. And then, God, would you use that to, to unite brother with brother, sister with sister, that there's one race, the human race. And so I thank you tonight. Thank you for what heaven's going to look like. And God, may we strive for that. May, Lord, may your will be done on heaven and in, in, in earth as it is in heaven. So, yes, God, bring unity to us people. Bring unity to our state. Bring unity to our city. Bring unity to our nation. And, Lord, last, we pray for those on the front lines right now. I pray for protection. And I pray, God, that you would give them safety. Heal those that have been infected. Raise up. Set free the prisoners. Break strongholds. God, do what only you can do. And we'll be careful to praise your name. And Lord, I pray for wisdom and discernment and favor on Brother Emmanuel, God, with his church, New Zion, Lord. Zion Hill, I pray your favor would be on them. Bless them. Thank you for that ministry. Lord, for the, for the commitment to the word of God and to lift high the name of Jesus. And uh, Lord, I pray for every need that's been mentioned tonight on the program, God, for those who've jotted down a need, for some who just are maybe in such pain they couldn't even type out their need. God, in the strong name of Jesus, would you be their healer? Would you be their deliverer? God, would you be their restorer? Would you restore back what the enemy has stolen from them, God? 
bless them, God. May they know beyond the shadow of doubt that if God is for me, who can be against me? (laughs) And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And my enemy, the enemies may come at me in one direction, but they will flee in seven. I pray tonight they would know that they are more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. And God, we're not victims. We are victors because of what Jesus Christ has done at the cross of Calvary. So we claim that victory tonight in the strong name of Jesus. We pray this. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Give me an amen. Amen. Type that in there. Let me know you're there. Hey, let me read one scripture, if I may, and just to kind of springboard into Elena singing tonight uh, her song on peace, the Prince of Peace. And whenever I hear that term, man, I know your heart probably goes back like mine to Isaiah 9, 6, where it all began. A Savior, a Messiah came to deliver us from our sins. The gospel is not God looked down from heaven and said, you know, Emmanuel and Kevin are so talented and gifted. Man, I got to have them on my team. No, the gospel is God looked down from heaven and he saw Emmanuel and he saw Kevin. He said, man, they are hopeless and they are helpless. (laughs) They cannot save themselves, deliver themselves, forgive themselves. They are in a mess. And because of my great love and because of my great mercy, I'm going to step in and do for them what they cannot do for themselves. And he sent his son, his perfect son, Jesus Christ, who died a wicked, cruel death. He paid a debt he did not owe because we owed a debt we could not pay. To God be the glory. And if you find yourself in that condition right here, right now, tonight, even on this Wednesday night, you realize what you're doing isn't working. You feel far from God, distant from God. And maybe you've made some poor decisions in your life. We all have. I mean, I raised both hands. I've made a few poor decisions in my life. But I'm going to tell you, God is ready to forgive you. God is ready to restore you. And right where you're at, He can forgive you of your sin, save your soul, and set you free. In fact, i tell you what I want to do. I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. And then I'll read this scripture and Elena will sing for us. Are you ready to give your life to Jesus? Come on. It'll be the greatest decision you ever make Amen. in your life. Right here, right now. I'm telling you, it's not an accident you're watching tonight. We, we, no, no, no. God supernaturally and sovereignly has drawn you to this program. God is working on your behalf. God has drawn you to watch this tonight, to hear this word, so that you might receive the gift of eternal life. Are you ready to give your life to Christ? Pray this simple prayer. It's a, kind of a commitment prayer. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God is raised from the dead, you will be saved. So let's do that right now. Give me the privilege, the honor of leading you to Jesus. Are you ready? You can pray this prayer. You can pray it out loud. Or if you've got other folks around, you want to whisper it in your heart, you can do that. You ready? Here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord Jesus, right here, right now, the best way I know how, I turn from my sin. I repent of my sin, and I turn to you. And I ask you to come into my life, come into my heart, change me from the inside out. Forgive me, set me free. And from this day forward, I want to live for you the rest of my life with all I've got for as long as I've got. You're my Messiah. You're my Savior. You're my Lord. I trust you tonight as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, I'm going to tell you if, you, if you pray that prayer and you meant it, I'm telling you, God has come into your life. Your life's never going to be the same. We'd love to celebrate with you and help you any way we can. Contact us. You can put a little note there on Facebook. We'll follow up if you'd like to do that. You can call the church. Send us an email from our website, gfbc.com. Let us know how we can help you. We'd love to follow up with you. We'd love to celebrate with you. Just type the name Jesus on that Facebook. Our folks will see that, and they'll begin to celebrate with you. Okay, let me give you a scripture verse now about this great Savior. Uh, The Bible says this. You know it. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And I love this. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. And I love this last title he gives to Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. Man, Pastor, if there was ever a time we needed peace, it's in this time. It's chaotic. It's discouraging. People are, they're just, we can't imagine this could happen in the United States of America. And we're just disillusioned. I see folks that are just totally anxious. Stress is overwhelming. I want to tell you something. There is a peace that passes all understanding. It doesn't come through religion. It doesn't come through denomination. It comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He, my friends, is the Prince of Peace. So would you just let God just minister to your soul, to your heart right now? And just receive this peace as Elena ministers to us through worship right now. So sit back, 
Enjoy this. Let God sing over your soul tonight. God bless you. To God be the glory, man. Thank you so much, Tanner and Elena. Wow, man. The, I love that the peace of God will meet you right there. And I don't know where you find yourself tonight. If you're on the mountain, praise God. But if you're in the valley, if you're in the rain, if you're in a storm, I want to tell you the peace of Almighty God will meet you there. He will never leave you or forsake you. Isaiah 41.10, He will never leave you or forsake you. To God be the glory. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping. Pastor, thank you for being God with us tonight. You, you. God bless you. I'd love to shake your hand and hug your neck, but we can't do that right now. So uh, God bless you, and uh, what a great word tonight for us. Thank you for sharing your heart. Thank you for joining with us tonight. I pray it's been an encouragement to you. Share the link. If, 
and uh, pray for us. We'll look forward to our, our Sunday morning live broadcast, 10 o'clock Sunday morning, and then, of course, next Wednesday at 714. God bless you. Hey, remember this, my friend. You are not alone. That's alive in the enemy. God is with you. His peace, the Prince of Peace, will meet you right where you are. God bless you. We love you. Have a great evening.